made into a <laughs> Star Wars action figure. <laughs> and today, I would like to welcome you to the club because... Goodness, goodness. Here is your Jin Erso action figure. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I'm, I feel very privileged to have joined the Star Wars doll universe. This is actually the very first uh, toy being revealed from Rogue One. It's not as good as mine, but, <laughs> but you know, it's great nonetheless. I, I don't know, she's got a pretty cool Han Solo gun belt. Woo! Oh, yeah, inspired by Han Solo. Um, so, Felicity, from what I've heard about your character, um, she's been compared to incredible heroines like Joan of Arc, which, of course, I love. And fans also compare this new hero to their favourite Star Wars heroes as well. How is Jin unique or different to other Star Wars characters? Uh, I feel there's one major difference between Jin, Urso and other Star Wars heroes, uh, Rey and Luke. Um, and that main difference would be that, that Jin, she's not a character who's asking, who am I and, and where have I come from? She, she very much, we know that about her. We know where she's come from. And that fact is, is what propels, propels the story and, and is the beginning of, of Jin's journey for, to find out what her reason is and, and her, her course. Mm -hmm. And she's had a very full life before we meet her, unlike other Star Wars heroes. Obviously, Absolutely. Um, no hero can go it alone. Diego, can you p please tell us a little bit about Cassian? Definitely. Um, hi, everyone. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say I've been waiting for this night for quite a long time. This is actually what got me into the project, the chance to share this energy. It's fantastic. So, yes, I play Cassian Andor, Captain Cassian Andor. And uh, he, he, he works for the Rebellion, for intelligence. And uh, the team starts being just the two of them, Jane and, and, and Cassian. But as the story continues, the team grows. And like any team, there's frictions, there's issues. And it's Cassian who has to keep them together. And one of the most important members of this team is a droid, an Imperial droid that is reprogrammed by the, by the Rebellion. And his name is K2SO. And he's probably the best friend Cassian has in, in the Rebellion, or the only one. And I think that's the first time we're hearing that information. That is a Star Wars special for you. Oh, was it? Yes! Cool. <laughs> I hope I was allowed. You were totally allowed. Good. It's fine. Uh, You're okay. I feel You're better okay. now. <laughs> um, of course, no Star Wars story could uh, exist without a droid. And in Rogue One, we meet K2SO, played by Alan Tudyk. Alan. Woo! talents. You're an actor, you're a voiceover artist, and you've actually played a robot before as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like being a droid in a Star Wars film? Uh, it's pretty... It's pretty... It's pretty... There we go. I got... Is it yours that's doing it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, uh, here we go. Oh, look at this. See, there, that's him right there. We were in Jordan. This was great. Uh, that's what I look like. Um, that's before the CGI, which is exciting. Um, I'm seven foot one in black, which uh, is really my inner person. Um, there, there you kind of saw my, my suit on there from the back. Yeah, that's, that's how I look. Um, but look, she gives him her pack, and he doesn't really. No. That's really, that's K2. Like, he doesn't, you know, go get the bags, droid. No. 
I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather not, that's not my thing. Because uh, Cassian reprogrammed him, and he did like a data wipe, and uh, when he reprogrammed him, he's not quite all there. Um, he speaks his mind and says things that, I don't know, can be unsettling and uh, just very honest. If you know any old people, it's like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> whatever he thinks. And it was great. It was great to play him. Uh, uh, there's amazing droids in the. It was my one was called the Force Awakens. Force Awakens, so good. You should check it out. Really good, guys. <laughs> guys should totally see that movie. It's way good. Um, uh, I met him at that party at the opening night, and. Uh, I said, I'm K2SO, I'm going to be the next droid in the series of droids, I guess. And he said, do you wear a suit or are you CGI? <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm CGI. And he said, you shit. <laughs> Lovely man. With pen pals. Pen pals to this day. Um, but yeah, because the first, the first C-3PO, they screwed him into the suit. And uh, anyway, he wears the suit, obviously. So, and I heard a story about something about you in the Maldives, possibly with an animal. I tamed a lion. Is that the story? There were several. No, no I, you, were, you were on a boat. You were on a bo boat in the Maldives. I we believe all it on featured boats. Diego and Felicity. We were, yeah, but we, we didn't go naked to swim with weird animals. <laughs> I wasn't naked. It was naked. just you. <laughs> that was in your mind. <laughs> I thought you were naked. I was wearing uh. something. But yes, there was a, 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 a... That's how you like to spend your time, isn't it? In the water swimming, with the animals. Swimming naked. With yeah, the convening animals. with nature. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a, there was a whale shark. Which, if you know what a whale shark is, it's like, it's great to be able to see one in your lifetime. To swim with one is even a, a better. They look like, they're huge. They're the biggest shark. Mm -hmm. And they have spots and they're gorgeous. And so I swam with her. I named her Karen. <laughs> and again, a pen pal to this day. Yeah. We're still Good. So, Good. So. Getting pen pals aplenty from the yeah. Star Wars yeah. universe. Yeah, I still like to do it. Um, there was also something exciting that happened at a tube station, Gareth. Is this true? Oh, yeah. Um, I used to, I, actually, my first job ever in, in television was just around the corner from where we are right now. And I used to pass it every day and go through the Docklands, the DLR, and all these train stations and think, this is like something from the future. This is like a sci-fi movie. If I ever get to do a sci-fi film in my life, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film it here. And then I parked that thought. And then one day when we're trying to figure out how to do these really long shots that involve a lot of running and building big, massive sets, and we were trying to be clever about it, I was like, oh, let's just film it at the Docklands. It looks futuristic. And everyone's like, ha, 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 yeah, very funny. Anyway, how are we going to really do this? And then eventually, the art department like, got really imaginative and we did this secret mission where we went to Canary Wharf uh, one night and it was, no one was allowed to tell anyone because we didn't want anyone finding out. And so as soon as that thing closed at midnight and you saw these guys with suits getting the last train and walking past, as soon as they'd gone, we all dived in. We had four hours. They had to set dress the whole thing, bring all the stuff in. They'd rehearsed it before. And we shot the scenes. <laughs> And we shot all the scenes, and then we had to be out of there by 4 a.m. And we were like, yeah, we got the last one just in time. And as we left, everything had disappeared, and they opened the doors, and all these guys in suits came in, and we were like, morning, morning. <laughs> and, and you so desperately want to tell them as you walk past, morning, morning, morning. We just shot Star Wars! <laughs> like, he was a stormtrooper. And that's and only it, two tube stops away from here. I, I knew this might come up today, so I counted it's four. Is it four? Yeah. OK, we'll start the pilgrimage now. <laughs> um, back to our amazing cast, Riff. Woo! Woo! Uh, your acting career ha has included roles in acclaimed indie films like Four Lions, Woo! Woo! The Reluctant Fundamentalist, Nightcrawler, and the new HBO show, The Night Of. What attracted you to this film? Why a Star Wars movie? Um, I thought just like to kind of change it up, it'd be good to do um, a film that 
other people have seen apart from just that one guy that was shouting. Um, thank you for your custom. Um, I mean, who doesn't want to do these films? I mean, they attract the best talent across the board and also Alan. Um, and uh, it's just an amazing world to, to, to be a part of, you know? Um, so yeah, no, just really wanted to be a part of it. And obviously I've seen kind of Gareth's um, work and just found it super exciting, so. And we know also that we have a reprogrammed Imperial droid. Riz, I have noticed in photos of your character, um, Bodhi, he's wearing an Imperial patch. So what's going on there? Yeah, well, um, I, can, I can talk about this, can't I? A little bit? Yeah. Little bit? Little yeah. Little bit. Um, <laughs> well, um, you know, Bodhi, Bodhi, Bodhi is a pilot and um, he works for the Empire, you know, to earn a living. And, like, you know, people work at big organizations, they don't agree with everything they do. Um, <laughs> but you gotta... It's maybe... You don't have to get judgy. It's maybe... But he's, Maybe questioning. Yeah, solutions. yeah, exactly. Maybe. He's kind of questioning things, and the, the planet that he is, the city that he is from, is actually an occupied planet, and uh, it's the actions of the Empire and the stuff that he's forced to be involved with over there that kind of makes him question his um, mm -hmm. his career counselor. Mm -hmm. And Bodhi's home is also where we meet Donnie and Jang's characters. <laughs> Bays and Chirrut. Um, Gareth, can you tell us about Jeddah? Uh, yeah. Jeddah's, I guess the easiest way to explain it is obviously our film takes place in a time where there are allegedly no Jedi remaining. And, and, but people still believe in the Force, and they still have that, that spirituality. And essentially, Jeddah's like, I guess, like the Mecca of Star Wars in that people go on pilgrimages, and, and, and the problem is right now is when the story begins is the, the it's an occupied territory by the empire and we get sucked into a, a story that involves these wonderful people mm -hmm. to the side Gareth, here. Mm. And two of the most Jeddah? important characters we meet in Jeddah are Chirrut and Bays. Um, they become crucial to the team and are played by Donnie Yen and Jiang Wen. <laughs> Johnny, what can you tell us about Chirrut? Uh, I just want to say hi, everybody. I'm Donny. May the force be with all of you. I play a blind warrior uh, who lives in uh, the planet Jeddah. I can't see, but I can feel with my heart uh, and believe in the spiritual of the force. And uh, the, obviously, me and Jiang Wen is we are the baddest fighter from Jeddah. And uh, me and uh, Jan, his character base, we are very good friends. Mm -hmm. And that's about the story I'm about to tell, right? That's it. He's <laughs> right. He's totally right. And sorry, my English is very limited. I come from Beijing and uh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what I say about this uh, character, I, I have to say Bass has a gun. <laughs> he, he, am I wrong? He has a gun. He has a huge gun. He has a weapon. The weapons are very huge. <laughs> is that right? Okay. I've heard it's right. Is that English, right? Okay. So, uh, he and me was a partner, and he believed, of course, believed in force, but my character don't believe force at that time. But, I pretend all of them, not them, just them. 
uh, to, to do very, very big mission. I cannot say that. And when this guy dead, I do something better. Maybe I believe by my action. He's thinker and doer. So I. Uh, I think you've anyway, got to leave it there. Anyway, I think you've got to leave it there. Anyway, I have a gun. Yeah. I have a gun. A, a big gun. gun. It's a, a gun. huge gun. gun. Huge, Thank you. Huge gun. That is base. Forest. Sorry, my inhibitor. Um, Forest. We've learned a lot about your. Woo! We've learned a lot about your character's deeper connection in the Star Wars galaxy. How does he connect to this band of misfits? I think we can definitely call them misfits. Uh, good to see you all. Um, <laughs> Saw Gerrera is a, is a rebel fighter. He's been fighting for years against the Imperial occupation. Uh, he's a guerrilla fighter. He, is, um, he has been uh, controlling a group of, of rebels that are out to the extreme. We're talking about the, that there's a, a series of different rebel groups that are coming together as an alliance, and all of these people are different parts of that. I'm, uh, I'm uh, leading my group, uh, which, which, which by any means necessary, He'll do what he needs to do in order to save the world. He was trained as a guerrilla fighter, and then he was trained um, by the Jedi as well. And Saw was originally revealed as an animated character, a character that originated with George Lucas. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, when Gareth introduced me to the character, uh, I, I was amazed, and I went back and started to look and see the series The Clone Wars and really understand what was going on with that. Woo! And, so that's how it was introduced, and, and uh, he's been integrated in working with Jen and everyone to, to make things move forward. Um, thank you. Gareth, for you as a filmmaker and as a fan, what was it like for you bringing to life a character created by George Lucas? Did you meet George Lucas? Did he come on set? Or? Um, well, one Friday I got a phone call of John Schwartz, who's one of the producers on the film here. He calls me and goes, guess who's going to visit on Monday? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, have a guess. Oh, I just like, asked, he went, George Lucas? And he went, yeah. I was like, shit. <laughs> and so I spent the whole weekend just crapping myself about this. <laughs> and, uh, and was very surprised because he is the nicest guy. He's got an amazing sense of humor. And we were showing him around all the stuff, and it's the honest, I, I would challenge anyone to have a more surreal experience than showing a Star Wars film to George Lucas for the first time. <laughs> it is right up there. And, and we, we were, and he, he'd, he'd start criticizing stuff, and you'd get really nervous, and oh God, oh God, oh God. And then he'd make a joke at the end, you realize he's being sarcastic. And there'd be this massive relief, but we were all having heart attacks. We were like, <laughs> He's got this really like dry sense of humor, which is I normally love, but I was I was like riding this roller coaster. Yeah. And um and I just want to say I want to take a moment to say like none of this, none of this would be happening if it wasn't for George Lucas. The guy's a genius. There is a theme a pattern of fathers in Star Wars films. Fathers' identities and their relationships with their children. Mads, we now have confirmation. Woo! Woo! We now have confirmation that your character, Galen Erso, is Jin's father. What else can you tell us? That's it. <laughs> <coughs> No, I, honestly, it's, as you know, there's a lot of secrecy around the whole thing for good reasons. Uh, it, my character is a person of interest. A lot of things are revolving around him. Uh, so it would be like a 
kind of a big spoiler to say too much, but can I say that he's a, um, he's a scientist? And he, at one point, invented something so beautiful, so fantastic, that it might change the universe. That's all I can say. And then I can say, I'm in a Star Wars film. I'm Woo! very proud. <laughs> fans, I'm bringing him back to the stage. Please welcome Mr. Ben Mendelsohn. I just had to take advantage of that moment. So. Um, welcome back to the stage. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back. And uh, what was that about? Well, <clears throat> I would love to answer your questions, but I have been in communication with the Emperor, and uh, the sizzle that we started to see earlier is now back on board. So, you can have me soliloquy, or we can have the sizzle. <gasps> the sizzle! Excellent call. Yeah? They're going to, uh, yes. Who wants sizzle? 